Need for Speed is a racing game franchise published by Electronic Arts and developed by several studios including EA Black Box, Criterion Games, and Ghost Games. By October 2013, the whole franchise has sold more than 150 million copies since it first launched in 1994, making it one of the most successful video game franchises of all time. Although Need for Speed games can vary significantly in terms of their tone and focus, especially in recent years, to the majority of Need for Speed veteran players, the core of the franchise should always evolve around police pursuits and car customization. The golden era of Need for Speed sits between 1998 to 2006. Players witnessed the birth of Need for Speed Underground, Underground 2, Need for Speed Carbon, and the legendary Need for Speed Most Wanted. The best-selling titles in the series with a whopping 16 million copies sold worldwide. In fact, 5 out of 8 titles released in that area featured either police chase or car tuning. Revisiting these 8 Need for Speed games is not just about nostalgia, it's about analyzing all the elements that made these games so addicting and enjoyable. And maybe, if we're lucky enough, we can find solutions to make current Need for Speed great again. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit is the third installment in the Need for Speed series. The game was released for PC and PlayStation in March 25, 1998, with each consisting of slightly different content. We start with a two-lap single-player race to give you guys a glimpse to the game. The game takes place in Redwork Ridge, a 5.4 long track that is also available in Need for Speed High Stakes. One, go!
Hot Pursuit offers a variety of driving assists, including auto braking, collision recovery, and traction control. The game also offers a rather unique approach to show players suggested racing line in each track. And there's the infamous Navigate feature. Staying in the suggested racing line may be difficult, or should we say, almost impossible, but it's always a great fun smashing those cones and watching the cone-hitting counter climbing rapidly. Easy left. Easy right. Easy left. Graphic-wise, unlike the PS version, which is more like a facelifted Need for Speed 2, Hot Pursuit PC version offered a wide range of graphic settings. It's also the first game in the series to support Direct 3D. If you have the widescreen feature turned on, you end up losing in-car dashcam. Long in Need for Speed 3 without those fabulous 2D Photoshop, not that realistic, but close enough dashcams, that's 100% unacceptable! Head-up display is also customizable in setting menus. Can't understand metric system? Don't worry. Tired of analog tachometer? Wait no more. You can even adjust HID unit's position in pausing menu during gameplay. Hot Pursuit offers 4 beginner tracks and 5 expert tracks, one being bonus track. Each track allows maximum of 8 laps gameplay, and if you find 9 tracks not enough, there are backwards and mirrored version waiting for you to complete. Any shortcuts to race tracks is a uh, tradition to most Need for Speed games. Hot Pursuit is no exception. Ignore that rather annoying Hyper Series announcer. You can actually see some of the shortcuts in each track, like this iconic hairpin in Red Rock Ridge. Expert level tracks share sections from the beginner ones, sounds a little bit lazy, but it's more than just turning short tracks into longer ones with more sharp turns. In Lost Canyons, which is the expert, more hardcore version of Red Rock Reach, you ended up in a giant underground complex. Dark, empty, with giant Egyptian-style stone architects and fire. And don't forget this shortcut. It's almost like the dark side of each track is revealed in the expert level, showing players its true identity. Countrywood is the expert version of Hometown. Moving away from rolling farmlands, it may be a rural setting, but this first track. Atlantica is definitely the most interesting one. The track takes place in a clean, ultra modern city with numerous gardens along the coastline. There are two shortcuts in Atlantica. This one won't give you any advantage, but a great amount of fun. This one, if you stop in time, will give you a huge boost. In Aquatica, the expert version of Atlantica, following the twisty coastline roads, there is this majestic underwater tunnel. You can even find a robotic submarine. Along the coastline, you can also find this huge cruise ship. Looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? You can play each track in Need for Speed Hot Pursuit at night or in the rain or both. It's nowhere close to today's dynamic weather standard, but it was a fairly rare and interesting feature 18 years ago. 
Raining condition makes car handling a bit more tricky with longer braking distance plus more understeer. Steer could be worse. Night driving is almost a nightmare on certain tracks like this Lost Canyon. The visibility and view distance are miserable especially when you are driving alone. I have to admit that night driving scared the shit out of me back when I was 8 years old. The worst is when you turn off your headlights. Only certain tarmac is illuminated as you can see here in Aquatica and forget those road lamps, they're totally helpless. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit includes a selection of American, Australian, and European sports cars. The game was the first in the series to support community modeling and offer downloadable cars for PC version. You can also customize car color to your own taste. Hmm, very nice. Besides the generic, almost pointless car compare feature, almost every car in the title has a showcase option in which players can learn about performance information of the vehicle or the history of each car manufacturer. Sensual styling, stirring performance, and high levels of luxury are the hallmarks of the Aston Martin DB7, available in coupe and convertible versions. Aston Martin has a long and long before many of the most famous automakers ever built a sports car. Aston Martin was winning races on the circuit. Mercedes-Benz dates back to the 19th century, when the old Benz looking at today's... The showcase also features 360 interior view and car slideshows. mentioned is the iTel Design Shigera, also known as Alfa Romeo Shigera. Shigera is a fully functioning concept car designed and constructed by the Italian car design company iTel Design back in 1997. Shigera is only available in Need for Speed Hot Pursuit PC version. The PlayStation version features the iTel Design BMW NASCAR C2 instead. For your interest, the well-known Lamborghini Cala Comse car, also from iTel Design, was featured in Need for Speed 2. For the DLC add-on cars, we have the British V12 engine-powered Lister Storm, Ferrari 456 GT, which has the same V12 engine from 550 Maranello, and Spectre R42, another niche British sports car that nobody really cares, exclusively to Australian PC players. Hot Pursuit offers Ford Falcon GT and HSV VT GTS. How grand is that? The El Nino, or the boy in English, is a fictional concept car designed by Unknown. It appears as a bonus car in Hot Pursuit and is unlocked upon winning a knockout race series in expert difficulty. It is alternatively unlocked after entering the cheat code El Nino at the main menu. El Nino is the fastest car in game with top speed around 220 miles per hour. Besides a horribly designed interior that also shares the same speed dial and tachometer from Corvette, the car is very hard to control with tons of understeer. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit's car physics sits between simulation and arcade, maybe a bit more arcadey than simulation. Cars have either strong understeer or no understeer at all, which means most of them offer Formula 1 racing car level traction. Downshifting is a lot more effective to slow the car down than the actual brakes. But that doesn't mean Need for Speed Hot Pursuit is not challenging. You have to understand its unique driving dynamics before thinking about 
crushing your opponents. It is also possible to fine-tune a vehicle's performance in the car tuning section. As shown here, I try to turn my CLK GTR to be more cornering orientated. With stiffer suspension, max arrow, and shorter gear ratio, it resulted in a noticeable more responsive steering as well as super tight gearing and top speed that is only around 167 miles per hour, whereas longer gear ratio my car can top over 200 miles per hour. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit was the first game in the series to feature playable police vehicles. Unlike the first Need for Speed, cops were strategically used spike strips and roadblocks to stop players. Cop players always begin behind the racers at the start of a race. The cop has to chase and arrest racers on the track. Police players are equipped with a surrounding radar system and a large map in order to better locate other racers. If a cop managed to arrest a racer, then they will respond to the location of the leading racer. You can place spike strips on the tracks to stop racers, but the AI tend to avoid your trap nicely, even if you place the strips on the on the racing line. Bummer. Top Pursuit involves a one-on-one -on -one battle along a single track. Events can have two, four, or eight laps. The events begin with a racer passing a cop vehicle. The police scanner by the player will blink accordingly to the distance between players and the cops. After encounter, a pursuit will be, will be triggered. It is possible for a racer to not be chased by the police throughout the whole race, but that will require players to drive fairly slowly. I don't see the smoke, but you seem to be heading for a fire. I'm giving you a warning. Try to take- The player may also listen to police radio chatter on pursuit statuses, revealing to them the current location of the racers, police cars, as well as location of roadblocks and spike trips. Players have limited number of times to be ticketed before getting arrested. I should now demonstrate how to majestically avoid spike strips, but for the sake of showing what's it like if you hit the strips and turn back. And turn myself in, just for you, my lovely viewers. Step out of the vehicle slowly. You're under arrest. You can rev up the engine without hitting the gas if you upshift and downshift repeatedly. Each car has its unique gear change sound and horn. Here's the best one. And here's the worst. Using cheat code, you can unlock some fairly interesting vehicles. Three, two, one.
Need for Speed Hot Pursuit is not a perfect game. The car Three, physics is so two, peculiar to describe one, as there's no go. sense of weight transfer, tire traction, oversteer, and so on and so forth. You see, it's somewhat pointless to discuss car physics for early Need for Speed titles, because if you really care, you'll be happy with Gran Turismo, and if you find Need for Speed not arcade enough, you'll be playing Ridge Racer happily as well. Thing is, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit is about mixing reality with fantasy. There's barely any title back then that allows players to participate in an intense police chase with real-world patent exotic sports cars. Yes, the car selection may be disputable, but I personally respect whoever proved implementing those bizarre but unique cars like this Shigera. And there's no other games had done that before. Clever map designs and those interesting moving easter eggs in each tracks are definitely the results of developers' novel mind and great attention to detail. Furthermore, Need for Speed 3 also took advantage of the multimedia capabilities by featuring audio commentary, picture slideshows, and music videos. Allowing modeling greatly extended the longevity of the game. Believe it or not, there are still people making car modes to the game today. With Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, what EA Canada or EA Black Box had achieved is that they established their own territory in racing game genre. The result is when somebody asks for racing games that features police chasing, Need for Speed is most likely the only suggestion he will find.